This is my presentation for laminitis for equine emergency and critical care class at Tarleton State University, author Medina Regalia, LVT. What is laminitis? Laminitis results from the disruption, which can be either constant, intermittent, or short term, of the blood flow to the sensitive and the insensitive laminae of the hoof. It is a very common cause of acute bilateral front lame lameness in most horses. It can result in lameness in all four limbs. If all four limbs are affected, this can be challenging to diagnose and treat. Often, when all limbs are lame, it may be confused with a colicky horse, unrelated myopathy, or beginning of end-stage neurological disease. It should be important to note that laminitis should not be confused with Founder's disease. Founder's disease is usually referring to a chronic long-term condition associated with the rotation of the coffin bone, whereas acute laminitis refers to symptoms that are associated with a sudden initial attack, which include pain and inflammation of the laminae. First, it is best to understand the anatomy of an equine's hoof. They have sensitive laminae structures that secure the coffin bone into the hoof wall. If, you, if, if there is inflammation of the sensitive laminae, it will often permanently weaken that laminae and then interfere with the wall and bone bond. Severe cases may separate and cause the coffin bone to actually rotate within the foot and then sink and eventually penetrate through the sole. Featured here is a picture showing where the sensitive laminae is attached to the coffin bone as well as the insensitive laminae which is attached to the hoof wall. Clinical signs of laminitis vary greatly from horse to horse and are really determined as far as how the extent of the, the laminitis has progressed. Often they will experience lameness, they have a shuffling type gait, sometimes so severe that they actually refuse to walk. They will have increased digital pulses, fever, and this backward leaning type of stance as featured here in this photo. In order to accurately assess if a patient has laminitis, a full history of the animal needs to be acquired. The owner should be asked how long the clinical signs have been present, if they have any current medical conditions, if they are on any current medications, and is there a concurrent illness that could cause this severe lameness, or is it a mare that recently is postpartum and may be experiencing metritis. To effectively diagnose, a full body condition score of the animal and full physical should be done in order to assess the overall health and weight of the animal. Often these horses are going to have a fever, increased heart rate, and often horses have a very strong or bounding pulse near the back of the fetlock, which is normally very faint. They may also have laminetic rings or a distorted hoof shape as, shape as featured in this photo. Blood work needs to rule out um, equine metabolic syndrome or pituitary pars intermedia dysfunction or PPID, which is also known as equine Cushing disease. Palpation of the limbs and gluteal muscles to exclude any other reasons for lameness. If the horse is willing to lift their foot, the, they need to evaluate the solar surface for solar prolapse of P3. They should apply hoof testers to determine the location of the pain, particularly around the toe, and then finally determine the obel grade of laminitis. This provides a baseline measure and assists in determining the prognosis and progression of the disease. Here on the screen we can see the OBEL scale. This is a grading system that is used to classify and understand laminitis progression in horses. It is extremely useful for veterinarians to use this evaluation method during their diagnosis and treatment because laminitis is a complex disease. Grade 1, the horse is going to be alternating and incessantly lifting their feet. Lameness may be not evident on the walk, but they have a stilted gait evidence at trot. Grade 2, the horse will move millingly but exhibit a stilted gait, and the horse may allow the foot to be lifted from the ground without difficulty.
At grade three, the horse is resisting any attempt to lift the foot and moves very reluctantly. Grade four, the horse will only move if forced to do so. On screen here, I wanted to provide a few hoof examples of the non-laminetic foot, a sinking, and a rotation. The non-laminetic foot has a normal exterior appearance, whereas the supporting limb laminitis shows evidence of sinking of the distal phalanx within the hoof capsule, clefting at the coronary band, detached lam lamella, leaving a gap and a hemorrhage between the hoof and the dermal tissue. The mare on the right with the chronic endocrinopathic laminitis shows evidence of rotation of the distal phalanx, founder rings, increased distance from the base of the lamella to the distal phalanx, and rotation from hoof capsule. Serum in the hoof white line from detaching lamella distally, crushed dermal tissue, and a solar abscess formation under the toe of the distal phalanx. So how can we treat laminitis? First of all, we need to remove or treat the initiating cause of the disease. Make sure you're getting an accurate body condition score and weight at the beginning of the treatment so we can accurately follow this animal throughout their progression of the disease. You should initiate immediate dietary changes, remove treats, carrots, apples, and you can concentrate the feed. You should also work out the quantity of forage that is necessary and required for this animal. Get the owner to weigh and then soak the, the food in cold water for 8 to 16 hours before feeding. Then you can determine if radiographs are required, especially when there is suspicion of rotation or sinking of the P3 on palpation of the coronary band, if they have a bad response to a hoof test or application of the toe, these radiographs can determine the amount of rotation or sinking. They can provide a baseline measurement if progression does occur. If you do do radiographs, it is suggested that lateral medial views of all four feet be done in order to create a, a baseline and see the dorsal hoof wall and the point of the frog. Then you can reassess in 24 to 48 hours, depending on the severity and the cause of the laminitis. And then you need to speak with the horse's usual farrier. Also communicate to the owner or the caregiver to, as to what is required for this animal. I also wanted to point out it is important not to starve these animals and completely remove the food, um, especially in obese ponies and donkeys. They have a very high risk of hyperlipemia, so it is very important to, to keep them fed but have it a controlled diet. Laminitis is extremely painful. So we need to address the pain and the perfusion in the laminae. Analgesia should be provided, as well as medications to reduce the inflammation of the laminae. Usually we use phenobutazone, um, 4.4 megs per keg IV. You can also utilize oral NSAIDs. You can also administer acepromazine at 0.02 megs per keg IV, which will also help decrease your horse's anxiety. Just make sure you have an accurate weight of this horse and take care not to overdose very small ponies. In addition to pain control, another form of our treatment is providing that animal mechanical support for that hoof. You should remove the shoe if they are shod unless the horse finds it too painful. You can also, also rasp down the clenches and each nail is removed individually with the horse on soft conforming surface, such as a stable with deep bedding. You can also facilitate and relieve some of their pain by performing an abaxial sesamoid nerve block. It is performed on the outside edges of the sesamoid bones, as featured here in this photo. It is above the fetlock joint where the medial and lateral palmar nerve divides, and this block will anesthetize the palmar digital nerves and their dorsal branches. These nerves are easily palpated at the back of the sesamoid bones, and you can use a 22 or 25 gauge one inch needle, five mLs of local anesthetic, 
place it over the medial and lateral palmar nerves. If it is performed properly, the skin sensation over the bulbs of the heel and the dorsal coronet bands should then be absent. This block provides analgesia to everything below that fetlock joint, the foot, the second phalanx, pastern, first phalanx. Um, when, when it is performed after a digital palmar digital nerve block that did not block the lameness and the lameness is eliminated, the lameness can be then isolated to a site below the fetlock joint but above the back of the foot. If the shoe is not removed, um, you should pack mid to caudal one-third of the solar surface of the hoof. And if they are unshod, apply a commercial foot support product. They sell styrofoam pads, solar support systems that use silicon-based equipment. If you don't have access to the, any of that, you can place padding over the caudal one-third of the hoof using a rolled up bandage and tape that in place. This may not be sufficient for large horses, but it may be sufficient enough for smaller horses, ponies, and donkeys. And make sure you keep them on deep conforming surfaces so it supports them. Because laminitis is going to be a condition that once they get it, they will probably get it again, we need to know how to minimize further structural damage of the hoof. This animal should be confined to a stable or enclosed in a field shelter of some sort until they are healed. You should use deep bedding, more than 20 centimeters. You can use sand, peat moss, unless they have styrofoam pads on their hooves. Um, if none of these are available, you should fence off a stable sized area in the paddock and ensure that they do not have access to lush green grass and it is extremely bare. Prognosis is generally good for cases of laminitis. They have a 95% survival at eight weeks following a laminitis episode. Their clinical outcome is good in about 72% of the cases and prognosis outcomes increase if other physical health conditions are also improved, such as lowering their body weight, lower the BMI, or if they were diagnosed with only a OBEL grades one or two. References used. I use, utilize the textbooks of Handbook of Equine Emergencies, also McCurran's Clinical Textbook for Veterinary Technicians, eighth edition, Large Animal Clinical Procedures for Veterinary Technicians, 3rd edition, as well as the 10 Early Warning Signs of Laminitis, retrieved from thehorse.com. Image sources listed below.